Named after Ernst Mach, a 19th century physicist and philosopher, this principle tries to explain how motion is influenced by the universe itself. So, what is Mach's principle? Imagine you're in space on a spinning gyroscope. According to Mach, the way you feel the centrifugal force isn't just about your motion, but is connected to the distant stars and galaxies. Sounds wild, right? Albert Einstein was fascinated by this idea. He thought that the large-scale distribution of matter in the universe, those distant stars, could determine local physical laws. This concept was crucial in developing his general theory of relativity. But let's break it down a bit more. Mach's principle suggests that if you see all the stars whirling around you, there's a physical law that makes you feel a centrifugal force. Essentially, mass out there influences inertia here. This means the distant universe affects how things move locally. Einstein's theory showed that the overall distribution of matter influences the metric tensor, a tool that tells us which frames are stationary with respect to rotation. Concepts like frame dragging and the conservation of gravitational angular momentum help make Mach's principle a reality in certain scenarios. However, the principle is vague, and not all formulations hold up. A notable example is the Godel rotating universe, a solution to Einstein's field equations that completely disobeys Mach's principle. In this universe, the distant stars seem to revolve faster and faster the further away you get, creating a paradox. So does Mach's principle fully explain the universe? Not quite. In the realm of general relativity, intuitive notions of distance and time become less clear. This ambiguity makes defining Mach's principle even more complex than in Newtonian physics. In fact, there are at least 21 possible formulations of Mach's principle, some considered more robustly Machian than others. One relatively weak formulation suggests that the motion of matter in one place should affect which frames are inertial in another. Before completing his general theory of relativity, Einstein discovered an effect he believed evidenced Mach's principle Imagine a fixed background for conceptual simplicity and within it construct a large spherical shell of mass. If this shell is set spinning, the reference frame inside the shell will precess with respect to the fixed background. This phenomenon is known as the lens thurring effect. Einstein was so satisfied with this manifestation of Mach's principle that he wrote a letter to Mach expressing his excitement. He explained that inertia seems to originate from interactions between bodies, aligning perfectly with Mach's considerations on Newton's pale experiment. If you rotate a heavy shell of matter relative to the fixed stars, a Coriolis force arises inside the shell, dragging the plane of a Foucault pendulum around, albeit at a minuscule angular velocity. The lens the Thuring effect supports the very basic notion that matter there influences inertia here. Without the spinning shell of matter, the plane of the pendulum wouldn't be dragged around. This suggests that inertia may indeed arise from interactions between bodies, as Mach proposed. However, the existence of a fixed background, which Einstein termed the fixed stars, remains a fundamental issue. Modern relativists see Mach's principles imprints in the initial value problem. Essentially, when we try to separate space-time into slices of constant time, Einstein's equations can be decomposed into a set that must be satisfied on each slice and another set that describes how to move between slices. The equations for an individual slice are elliptic partial differential equations, meaning only part of the geometry can be specified by the scientist. The rest is dictated by Einstein's equations on the slice. In an asymptotically flat space-time, boundary conditions are given at infinity defining a frame with respect to which inertia has meaning. By performing a Lorentz transformation on the distant universe, inertia can also be transformed. A stronger form of Mach's principle applies in Wheeler-Mach-Einstein spacetimes, which require spacetime to be spatially compact and globally hyperbolic. In such universes, the distribution of matter and field energy momentum at a particular moment determines the inertial frame at each point in the universe. There have been other attempts to formulate a more fully Machian theory, such as the brands dicker theory and the hoyle nalikar theory of gravity, but most physicists argue that none have been fully successful. At an exit poll of experts in 1993, only a minority believed general relativity was perfectly Machian. Despite these challenges, Einstein was convinced that a valid theory of gravity must include the relativity of inertia. He believed this so strongly that in 1918, 
he listed Marx's principle alongside the principles of relativity and equivalence as fundamental to a satisfactory theory of gravitation. However, he later acknowledged that Marx's principle had not decisively advanced physics and that the origin of inertia remains one of the most obscure subjects in the theory of particles and, and fields. Let's explore how Albert Einstein interpreted and utilized this intriguing concept in his groundbreaking work on general relativity. One fundamental issue in relativity theory is that if all motion is relative, how can we measure the inertia of a body? We must measure inertia with respect to something else. But what if we imagine a particle completely alone in the universe? According to Marx's principle, such a particle's state of motion has no meaning. In Marx's words, the investigator must feel the need of knowledge of the immediate connections, say of the masses of the universe. Albert Einstein found these ideas fascinating and viewed Marx's principle as suggesting that inertia originates from interactions between bodies. This idea aligns with philosophical holism, which implies that everything in the universe is interconnected. Marx's suggestion can be interpreted as an injunction that theories of gravitation should be relational rather than absolute. Einstein brought Max's principle into mainstream physics while developing his general theory of relativity. In fact, it was Einstein who first coined the phrase Max's principle. He was inspired by Max's book, where Max criticized Newton's concept of absolute space, particularly the famous bucket argument. In Newton's bucket experiment, a bucket filled with water is rotated. Initially, the water remains still, but eventually it climbs up the sides of the bucket due to centrifugal forces. Newton argued that these forces arise only when the water rotates with respect to absolute space, represented by distant stars. However, Mach countered that such forces should be understood relative to other bodies, not in terms of absolute space. Einstein interpreted Marx's perspective to mean that the distant stars and galaxies contribute to the inertia we experience locally. He believed that the apparent forces distinguishing relative and absolute motion result from the asymmetry in our reference system, where smaller objects like buckets move relative to much larger and heavier bodies like the Earth and distant stars. However, it's important to note that Mach's principle was never fully developed into a quantitative physical theory. While Einstein was inspired by it, Marx's principle is not a fundamental assumption in general relativity. Nonetheless, the principle of equivalence between gravitational and inertial mass is a cornerstone of Einstein's theory. In summary, Einstein's interpretation of Marx's principle has sparked significant debates and furthered our understanding of the universe. While Marx's ideas remain more philosophical than empirical, they have undeniably influenced modern physics and our perception of motion and inertia.